in this speech by Joram Peterson, he talks about a problem that has been on his mind since the 1980s. He starts by sharing that he began grappling with this issue or as he puts it, when the problem started working on him. Peterson opens up about experiencing a series of a long and a scary nightmares related to nuclear destruction during that time. These dreams deeply affected him, making him wonder how a dream so terrible could reflect a reality that could be just as awful. He also expresses amazement at the fact that despite the creation of thousands of weapons capable of unimaginable destruction and the significant change in human capacity that came with it, people continued with their everyday lives without seeming to acknowledge that something fundamental had changed. This led him to question why this disturbed him so much when it didn't seem to bother most people around him. As Peterson delves into his personal journey of trying to understand what he refers to as evil, he acknowledges that it's an unusual pursuit for an academic like himself. He notes that academics typically focus on intellectual and theoretical matters. But the concept of evil, according to Peterson, is not an academic or theoretical issue. Instead, he sees it as an existential issue that deals with the absolute nature of reality. The speech reveals Peterson's lifelong quest to comprehend the nature of evil and more importantly, to explore possible solutions to it. He reflects on the paradox that academics might use their scholarly pursuits as a shield. Avoiding questions about the absolute nature of reality, one notable aspect of Peterson's speech is his use of straightforward language to convey complex ideas. He shares personal experiences and thoughts, making the speech relatable to a broad audience. The simplicity of his language enhances accessibility, making it easy for even a child to grasp the essence of his message. Peterson's speech prompts reflection on the impact of nuclear weapons on our collective psyche and the disconnect between the potential for unimaginable destruction and the seemingly unchanged nature of day-to-day -day life. It invites listeners to ponder existential questions and consider the role of academia in addressing profound and real-world issues. In terms of delivery style, Peterson comes across as sincere and introspective. His willingness to share personal struggle adds a human touch to his exploration of deep and challenging topics. The speech encourages a thoughtful examination of one's own understanding of reality and the ways in which individuals, including academics, engage with fundamental questions about good and evil. Joram Peterson's speech offers a glimpse into his intellectual and personal journey, presenting complex ideas in a manner that is both accessible and thought-provoking. It invites the audience to join him in questioning the nature of evil and the ways in which we grapple with existential concerns in our pursuit of understanding reality. When I started working on this problem, or I guess when, when it started working on me, was probably really in the mid-80s, and I found myself suffering from two things. One was a very lengthy sequence of nightmares about nuclear destruction, and they were very affecting dreams. And associated with that was a sense of amazement that a dream that was that awful could reflect a reality that could be that awful and an additional amazement at the fact that despite the production of thousands and tens and thousands of weapons of unimaginable destruction and the qualitative change in human capacity that represented that people could go about their day-to-day -day lives without acting as if anything fundamental whatsoever had changed now, I've never really been able to figure out why that disturbed me so much when it seemed to not disturb, to any profound degree, most of the people I knew. It doesn't really matter. Um, the upshot of it, was, of it was that I spent, I probably spent my whole life trying to understand what evil was and, more importantly, what might be done about it. Um, it's a strange pursuit in some ways for an academic to un undertake because academics tend to talk about academic things. And one thing you can say about evil is that whatever it is, it's not bloody well academic. 
like, it, it's not an intellectual issue. It's an existential issue. And it's, it's not a theoretical issue. It's an, it's an issue that deals with the, the absolute nature of reality. And I guess sometimes I think that people who go into academia go into academia to shield themselves from having to ask questions about the absolute nature of reality. Joram Peterson diving into a big topic, the ideal of evil. He suggests that before we start talking about something as serious as evil, we should really understand what it means. He learned a lot about this from a historian named Jeffrey Burton Russell, who looked into the history of the idea of the devil back in the 1980s. What Peterson got from the Russell's work was a clearer picture of the difference between two heavy things, tragedy and evil. He believes that you can't really talk about evil until you can tell it apart from tragedy. So, he is on a mission to help us see evil differently by connecting it to the basic way we humans exist. He describes us as dealing with two big things, the limited stuff finite and the endless stuff infinite. And these according to Peterson are just facts about being a person. Our experiences, he says, are way more complicated than we can fully grasp. Life throws infinite complexities at us. And this, he thinks, is why people turn to religious experiences and beliefs. It's not just about believing. It's about trying to make sense of our existence caught between what's limited and what's limitless. Peterson moves on to our limits in the face of the endless. He says it brings unavoidable consequences, what he calls the basic conditions of life. The first of these conditions is that the limited part of us is always overshadowed by the endless part. In simpler terms, we're always dealing with things that we can't fully understand or control. He brings up suffering, saying it's a big part of being human. We all have to face the fact that we are going to die, get sick and deal with tough times. Even if we are not suffering right this moment, someone we care about probably is. So facing these tough realities is not just a school-like issue. It's a fundamental part of who we are. And we have to handle it as we go through life. Joram Peterson's talk encourages us to really think about the heavy stuff, the tough parts of being human. He makes it clear that these aren't just ideas for classrooms. They are everyday challenges we all have to deal with. The way he breaks down these complex thoughts into simple terms help us connect with the message. It's like a wise friend sharing some deep reflections on life. I think before you can talk about something, before you can dare to talk about something like evil, you should do some thinking about what it is that you're talking about, definitionally speaking. And I learned this, I believe, from a historian named Jeffrey Burton Russell who wrote a very detailed history of the idea of the devil in the 1980s when such histories were, were strange to say the least. He, he was very interested in the history, the embodiment of ideas of evil. And one of the things he, his work did for me was to help me clarify the distinction between two terrible things, the distinction, a distinction that has to be made, and that's the distinction between tragedy and evil. And I don't think you can talk about it evil at all until you distinguish it from tragedy. And so I'm going to try to distinguish evil from tragedy by making some reference to the essential existential condition of human beings. I would say that the nature of human being is such that it consists of a confrontation with the bounded finite, with the unbounded infinite. And that those are the bare facts of the matter. And the facts are that the, the, the world of experience as it presents itself to us is literally and not metaphorically complex beyond our capacity to understand. And that means that people deal in a real sense on an ongoing basis with the infinite. And I believe that that fact is the reason why religious experience is essentially, and belief is essentially endemic to mankind. It's a human universal and it's not because people believe it's because human existence as such consists of a confrontation between the finite and the infinite. And religious systems merely take that into account. Now our finitude in the face of the infinite has some inevitable consequences and I would say those consequences are essentially the existential conditions of life. And the first of those consequences is, is that the finite is always overwhelmed by the infinite. It has to be because it can't encapsulate it. And so what that mean, means is that it's that suffering is central to the nature of human existence. 
and suffering exists as a consequence of the consequences of our limitations. I mean, every single person who's alive is going to die. And every single person who's alive is going to deal with, with serious physical illness and mental distress. If they don't suffer, if they aren't suffering it directly, immediately, right now, on their own, it's almost inevitably the case that every single person who walks the earth is con confronting the, the bare bones of reality at that level in the guise of an afflicted family member. And so the fact of our finitude is, is again, no academic issue. It's, it's central to the nature of our being, and we're forced to deal with it on an ongoing basis. Finally, the conclusion. In the 1980s, Joram Peterson had scary dreams about nuclear destruction. These dreams made him wonder how something so awful in a dream could be real. He was amazed that people could live normal lives despite having dangerous weapons. Because of these thoughts, Peterson spent a lot of time trying to understand what evil is and what can be done about it. Evil is not just a topic for academics, it's about real, serious issues in life. He learned from a historian named Jeffrey Burton Russell that you need to understand the difference between evil and tragedy. Evil is more than just something bad happening. It's about the absolute nature of reality. Peterson believes that being human means dealing with limits and facing both the finite limited and infinite limitless. Life is complex and often beyond our understanding. He suggests that religion is widespread because humans naturally grapple with the finite and infinite aspects of life. Peterson talks about how our limits lead to suffering. Everyone has to deal with things like illness and distress. Facing these challenges is a fundamental part of being alive. Our limitations are not just academic problems, they are essential aspect of our existence. We are forced to deal with them throughout our lives. After listening to Peterson, I realized that understanding evil is not just about thinking, it's about facing the tough parts of life. His speech reminds me that everyone deals with challenges and it's part of being human. Joram Peterson's speech encourages us to think about the big questions in life. He helps us see that facing challenges is a key part of being human and we need to grapple with both the limits and vastness of our existence. It's not just about ideas, it's about real life.